Images of a scale model of the Indian Air Force Gothic UCAV unmanned combat air vehicle surfaced for the first time in a recent video of the Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur, IIT Kanpur. The UAV design lecture was posted in the Institute's YouTube channel on September 28th. As reported by LifeFist, this could be either a mock-up or a subscale flying model of the SWIFT stealth wing flying testbed. The technology demonstrator designed and built in collaboration with the Aeronautical Development Establishment ADE, to prove technologies for the Gatak. Reports indicate that a prototype SWIFT will be fitted with a Russian NPO Saturn 36MT turbofan engine, which currently powers the Indian nearby cruise missile. Viewers may note that the Gatik project, which in Hindi means lethal, began as Project Aura, Autonomous Unmanned Research Aircraft, and was first acknowledged in 2010. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer All Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. Lockheed Martin has released a very compelling video regarding Tactical Airborne Laser Weapon System TALWS. In the video, F-16s equipped with laser pods are shown to be working in tandem with Boeing KC-46 Pegasus, which is equipped with tactical infrared sensors that are able to passively detect and track threats. It is shown that once a tanker detects an incoming missile, it passes its position to F-16s. The F-16s then direct high energy on the incoming threat to defeat it. Viewers may note that lasers have some very important advantages and are hence seen as a groundbreaking technology. The speed of light enables them to hit their targets almost instantaneously. Laser weapons also don't need to carry ammunition like traditional systems and hence they will be able to take out a much larger number of threats, constrained only by the power supply limit of the platform. They are silent and invisible, which makes them very much suitable when it comes to taking out targets discreetly. They are also so much cheaper and could cost as low as $1 per shot. USS Ticonderoga, lead ship of Ticonderoga class cruiser, has recently arrived in the port of Brownsville in Texas where it will be scrapped. The ship was decommissioned in 2004 after two decades of service. The retired Navy cruiser will be broken down in a safe, respectable, and responsible manner, International Shipbreaking Senior Manager Chris Green told the Valley Morning Star. Ticonderoga was laid down in 1980 in Ingalls Shipbuilding Yards in Pascagoula, Mississippi. The development of this class of ships had begun in the 1970s and was derived from the existing Spruance class guided missile destroyer. USS Ticonderoga was the first of the service's operational warships to be equipped with the Aegis Combat System. The Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System is a United States Department of Defense Missile Defense Agency program developed to provide missile defense against short to intermediate range ballistic missiles. Aegis BMD is designed to intercept ballistic missiles post boost phase and prior to reentry. India has joined a select group of nations to indigenously develop and test anti-radiation missiles. The missile named Rudram-1 will provide a significant boost to its air force. It is developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO. In the test, the missile was launched from an Indian Air Force IAF, SU-30 MKI flanker on October 9, 2020. The launch took place over the integrated test range 
at Balasore in the Bay of Bengal, off the coast of the eastern state of Odisha. In a statement, the Indian Ministry of Defense said the Rudram-1 struck a radar-emitting target located on Wheeler Island with pinpoint accuracy. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh congratulated the DRDO on what he called a remarkable achievement. The work on the missile started in 2012. The Russian Ministry of Defense has announced what it says is the first test launch of its Zircon hypersonic cruise missile against a naval target. The first-in-class Project 22350 Frigate Admiral Gorshkov fired the weapon. The test seemed to have been timed to coincide with the birthday of President Vladimir Putin. The test took place on October 6, 2020, and the Defense Ministry released a short video of the launch the very next day. According to TV Zvezda, the official television network of the Russian Ministry of Defense, the Zircon, also sometimes translated as Sirkon, achieved a speed of more than Mach 8 before striking a target located 280 miles or 480 kilometers away in the Barents Sea during the test. The Russian defense chief told Putin that the missile achieved a maximum altitude of 17.4 miles or 28 kilometers and hit its target after a flight time of 4 minutes 30 seconds. Gerasimov added that the Zircon, officially part of the 3K-22 weapons complex, is expected to equip additional submarines and surface ships of the Russian Navy. The Azerbaijani Defense Ministry has published video footage of military equipment that Armenian troops left on the battlefield after fleeing. The Azerbaijani Armed Forces continue counter-offensive operations on the front line, spokesman for the Azerbaijani Defense Ministry, Lieutenant Colonel Anar Ivazov said, Trend Reports. During the ongoing battles, the units of the Armenian Armed Forces, suffering heavy losses, were forced to retreat, Ivazov said. The spokesman added, The Azerbaijani Army has captured new strongholds, destroyed military equipment of the Armenian Armed Forces. As a result of artillery strikes on subdivisions of the armed forces of the occupying country, the command post on the defense line of the 5th Mountain Rifle Regiment of the Armenian Armed Forces was destroyed. The lieutenant colonel also noted that one tank and three artillery units of the Armenian Armed Forces were destroyed as a result of a precision artillery strike. Pentagon's Defense Visual Information Distribution Service DVID's, website shows that the U.S. Navy has deployed F-18 E and F Super Hornet carrier-based twin-engine fighters equipped with a new infrared search and track system IRST pod to patrol the Persian Gulf region. The sensor appears as a small black button on the front of the plane's centerline external fuel tank below the fuselage. Viewers may note the U.S. Navy's Nimitz and Gerald Ford-class supercarriers currently rely exclusively on the Super Hornet. IRST hone in on heat signatures instead of radar waves, which stealth aircraft can evade. They are also less vulnerable in electronic warfare, which include the use of jammers to impede the working of radars. Viewers may note that U.S. Navy is planning to commission its first Block III variants of the Super Hornet in the near future which will have the IRST by default. U.S. President Donald Trump said on Wednesday that all U.S. troops in Afghanistan should be home by Christmas. Viewers may note that the United States and the Taliban have agreed to a deal in February, as per which foreign forces would leave Afghanistan by May 2021 in exchange for counterterrorism guarantees from the Taliban and power-sharing formula with the Afghan government. Trump administration has stated that the United States will go down to between 4,000 and 5,000 troops in Afghanistan around November. On Twitter, Trump said, We should have the small remaining number of our brave men and women serving in Afghanistan home by Christmas. President Trump, who is seeking re-election next month, has been in favor of moving out from what he called ridiculous, endless wars. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.